Hi. In this video, let's take a look at this Invi-Ray T2S Plus thermal imager. Pergear sent me this unit for review. As usual, I will leave a few links in the video description below for those who are interested in this imager after watching this video. On this channel, we have reviewed quite a few different thermal imagers already. Similar to the Infisense P2 thermal imager I reviewed some time ago, this one also connects to your Android phone. Now I have the camera zoomed in quite a bit, but if you just look at the size, we have a ruler here, you can see that each side is actually just about one inch, so that is quite small. Nevertheless, it's significantly larger than the P2 sensor that we reviewed a while ago. If you recall in that Invisense P2 sensor review video, I mentioned that that sensor is a little bit too small to my taste. And this one, if you look at it, feels just about right. It is housed in this relatively rugged aluminum housing, and uh, everything is very compact still. Price-wise, the T2S Plus is at around $330, which is definitely a lot of money. But compared to other brands of similar thermal resolutions and specs, this is actually quite competitive especially given that the T2S Plus has an adjustable focus, which comes in handy when you are inspecting your target close up. This feature is definitely a plus when dealing with electronics. While we are zoomed in, I just want to show you the focus adjustment here, and it's a totally manual. You can see that we have quite a bit of range here. We can adjust it all the way outwards here, and we can push it all the way back. Now it feels very smooth, so we'll have to see it in action later on to see how well it adjusts the focus. But that is definitely a feature I was looking forward to. Nowadays, we're seeing more and more of these thermal imagers made specifically for smartphones. And one of the key advantages is that smartphones today are very powerful, which typically translates into faster operation and ease of use. For instance, you can easily record infrared videos and send it to your computer from your smartphone. This is something a lot of standalone devices lack. Now let's take a look at the specifications. This thermal imager has an IR resolution of 256 by 192. For thermal imagers, this is actually pretty much the sweet spot, as at this resolution, you should be able to discern anything in the IR image alone without the help of a visible spectrum image for comparison. Higher IR resolution imagers are available, but they will be significantly more expensive. So for hobbyists, this resolution, and maybe even a little less, would be sufficient. The frame rate of this T2 Plus is also quite impressive. It is specced at 25Hz, which is almost as good as your typical visible spectrum camera. So you should have no problem recording moving objects. The noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD, of the sensor used is also very good. It is specified at 60 millikelvins at room temperature. The lower the NETD, the sharper the image, as there will be less thermal noise. Another figure mentioned in the spec is the MRTD, or minimum resolvable temperature difference. The T2S Plus has an MRTD of less than 500 millikelvins, or less than half of a degree. This number is not always published, so I don't know how it compares to other thermal imagers. My assumption, though, is that this figure is going to be quite comparable given the other specs we have seen. Although not specified, I assume the sensor is also a UFPA, or uncooled focal plane arrays detector, of some sort. These sensors are made of an array of microbolometers, and of course are very expensive to make. In fact, the sensor cost is the main price component of most thermal imager products. Thermal transparent materials, such as the IR lens, can also be very expensive as well. Another important spec is the temperature measurement range. The range for the sensor is spec'd between minus 20 degrees Celsius to 450 degrees Celsius, or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 842 degrees Fahrenheit. This tiny thermal imager came in a relatively large product box, as you can see here. This is the box it came in. Now, the top of the box is actually very interesting. I'm not sure if you can see the pattern here, but it, it does have these kind of concentric 
groove, if you can see here. Now this does remind me of a fingerprint of some sort. I thought it was a nice touch, as usually I don't comment on the product box, but this one is a little bit unique. Inside this relatively large product box, you have your typical user manual. You also get this USB-C to USB-C cable, and it is used to connect your thermal imager to your phone if you don't want to connect it directly. And perhaps more importantly, you do get this very nice hard shell carrying pouch. And this is actually a very nice touch as you can put your thermal imager in without having to worry about getting damaged. Also, you can put a few other things like your USB cable here so that you can carry everything along in this little pouch. Pergear also sent in this portable camera mount. I'm not entirely sure if this is part of the standard product offering, but it is a very nice touch. You can see that on the one side you can mount your camera, on the other side you can mount the IR sensor, and you can adjust the angle for optimal positioning here. I just mounted the phone and the sensor on this portable mount. As you can see that everything fits together very nicely. I also downloaded the Xtherm app from the App Store, so we'll use that to take a look here. Now let me plug in the cable here. And uh, it should load automatically. And it does. You can see that we can immediately... Yep, it only took a few seconds to boot up, which is really nice. And of course, we'll take a proper look just in a bit. Now, most of my lab equipment in the background are currently off, so you can't see too much going on there. But you can see that bright spot, that's actually the isolation transformer that is currently on. So before we go too much further, let me just comment on a few things. The first minor annoyances I noticed is that when I was hooking this up, I noticed that I can only hook it up with the USB connectors opposing each other from the camera and the phone for the image to stay upright. And uh, no, I have tried the other way around by flipping this uh, image sensor and the image becomes upside down and I flip my phone the same way. And there's some setting got to be able to find, but I haven't found it so far. You can see that if I flip the phone, the image automatically flips with the phone. So there's no way for me to align these two ports on the same side and still maintain the orientation of the image. And that unfortunately means that I have to wind this cable from this side all the way to the other side. Luckily, the cable is just long enough to be able to do that. And the second thing I want to comment on is the Xtherm app. This app is quite bare bone and there is a, not really a whole lot, but it's very easy to use. For example, you can click on the temperature button here and you can add your markers. It will automatically detect the hot spot, the cold spot, and also the center temperature. And of course, you can come back here to change a different detection mode and uh, you can also use the middle button here to adjust the shutter. So if you listen carefully, you will hear the shutter clicking when I click on this button here. And that is for the shutter to calibrate. That is very typical for these kind of uh, UFPA sensors. Next, let's move on to the settings. And we do have quite a few settings you can select from, which is something you would expect. Now, from the palette modes, I selected the iron rainbow. That's my favorite. Of course, you can adjust them accordingly based on your personal preference. And any of these would work just well. We also have the temperature units. I currently set it to Fahrenheit. And of course, you can enter some of the correction factors. For example, ambient temperature and everything else, humidity and uh, emissivity. As we mentioned earlier, different uh, objects have different emissivity. For a black body, that's one, and everything else is less than one. So that is something, if you want to have a very accurate temperature reading, you need to adjust that emissivity to match the material you are currently measuring. And their distance, I'm not sure what that is, because clearly my hand, you can see that is fairly in focus, that is only a few centimeters away. So not entirely sure what that distance is. Perhaps that distance has something to do with uh, testing the temperature I'm not entirely sure. But everything else you can also, by the way, there is a camera in camera. And let me just turn it on. 
So you can see we do have this camera on the side. Of course, right now the view is blocked by the cable. And we can turn it off by the look of it. This is a, definitely a glitch in the software. As you can see now, it is turned off, but I can't turn that image off. Anyway, so here are the basic settings of this camera app. Now the app has a little more to be desired. I just restarted the app. I noticed that uh, the marker is gone. So I had to press this and uh, re-add in the marker. Now every time I restart the camera, I notice that these are not saved. So even if I come here, for example, I come to say save, I would assume that saved the setting, but it doesn't. So if I go back here, you will see that the temperature measurement is gone. So I have to add them back. Anyway, that's just some minor annoyances here. And with this app, you can also take pictures and uh, videos, which is fairly standard. We will take a look at those later as well. So the first thing I wanted to look is this Arduino board. I have the power on for a while now. And you can see, wow, right now, this is actually very clear. And we're about maybe 12 centimeters from the board. And you can see that everything is extremely clear. Now I move closer, of course it's getting out of focus, but never mind because we do have the ability to adjust focus. So now you can actually see how close we can get, still can focus on the components. So here is that SOT23 regulator. We're about just one centimeter from it and you can still see it very, very clearly. And let me take a picture here so that you can see a little bit later. And I can superimpose that with a video, hopefully. Oh, so this is another annoying thing. While I press the picture taking button, there is no feedback. So you don't know whether or not it worked. Uh, that is a little bit annoying. Now it does seem that this color scheme is not probably ideal for this application here. So let me uh, change it. Now there's definitely some glitch as you can see. Now we have multiple temperatures on the board here. So let me remove it and uh, re-add the temperature. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but uh, let's uh, also change the color scheme to, oh, rainbow. High contrast. Yeah, so this one actually contrast is very high. I was just going to say that the contrast was a little bit low a few minutes ago. And you can see the focusing is actually very sharp. And you probably don't need to get this close, but I just want to show you the capability here. And this is the, again, let's see, that's the cap. Wow, you can almost read the marking on the cap. That is very interesting. And that's because different materials have different emissivity, so that minute temperature difference is actually captured by the material. So even though this is not an optical image, you can still read that uh, marking on the capacitor. This just tells you how much resolution this thermal imager has, which is very impressive. Next, let's take a look at this uh, switching power supply. And uh, I have powered it on for a while, so let's see. Wow, so as you can see, we can see a lot of details here. Again, let me hit the record button so we can actually show you from directly the recording done on the IR sensor here instead of my camera because you won't be able to see the details here. Actually, the macro lens really helps on this IR sensor as you can see a lot of things in very high details here. Very impressive. And you can see back there the diodes and uh, the MOSFETs are still pretty cool and everything else is uh, also pretty cool except that component down there 
wow, it's reading at 200 Fahrenheit. So what that component is, it's probably a resistor down there and it's right next to the heat sink. So that's very interesting that you can see this much detail. And here I have a cup of hot water. You can probably see the steam coming out from the water from the infrared image here. And also I have a cup of cold water. So let's pour the hot water into the cold water and see what we've got here. So I will try to hold the camera here. As you can see that, oh, I made a mess here. But you can see the cold water now has become hotter and hot water, of course, I spilled a little bit, but nevertheless, you can see the thermal image from this little experiment. As a classic example, let me put my hand on the table here. You can see the thermal image of my hand. Now, of course, if I remove my hand, you will still be able to see the thermal image that is left behind. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I have to say I'm pretty impressed by the performance and quality of this T2S Plus infrared imager. I really like the macro lens and uh, adjustable focus. It makes this imager suitable for troubleshooting electronic circuits. The software though is not as polished as I would have liked and still has a lot of room for improvements. But it is definitely useful. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel either. I will catch up with you next time.